Send cut, send for the win. Welcome to Simple Rud. Now, on this episode, I plan to start test fitting to see if all well, my mad science is correct or not. Now, as you can tell, I haven't painted anything, and that's because with the custom parts, I'd like to test fit, make sure I don't have to make any modifications because I don't want to have to make modifications after it's painted. And I definitely don't want to modify painted parts and do touch up, none of that. I want to verify that my reverse engineering is close enough that it all goes together the way I want it to. And I can't really do that without putting it together. Now, if you're enjoying this build series and you look forward to the more videos I got coming out, please like and subscribe to this video and comment down below with, you know, your thoughts on the build or what you do differently or anything like that. Now, before I take this out and start, you know, throwing things together, I want to follow up on Sin Cut Sins. Now, if you recall, if you watched one of the previous videos, I got some custom parts from Send Cut Send, and one of them didn't have tapped parts. I opened that package and found out the day before Thanksgiving. It was Wednesday. I reached out to them at 5 p.m. on Wednesday. They got back to me around 9 p.m. Yes, 9 p.m. the night before Thanksgiving. And all they wanted was some pictures to see, you know, how they missed it in their process, right? Kind of get the idea of basically call me on my BS if I'm making things up. Now, at that point, I had already put plastite screws through some of the holes that weren't tapped, but I did still have some that, you know, I didn't have the right size for, so I didn't even touch those and sent the pictures. They started processing my new replacement part on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving, they started me a new part. Within a week, I had the replacement part at no charge. And it was as simple as that. Two emails. All I have to say is send, cut, send. I am forever a loyal customer. That is customer service. And that is amazing to see. Now, that all being said, I'm not sponsored, even in the slightest. I don't know when you're watching this video, but currently I have like 400 subs. I'm not a big channel by any means. I paid for all of this and it will probably pay for this channel going forward is well it's all my personal stuff so why not so i do want to say this is honest feedback and so far i'm very happy with their customer service their product and their usability on their website so thanks send consent all right new brackets in old brackets out everything worked out i like it now the one thing about doing the channel the way I am going to be doing it going forward is at times my stuff's not going to work out. And, you know, I've got to show you that process. This is not perfect by any means, but it worked out so far. Now, that's a big reason for test fitting everything before painting right, is just to go through the process to verify that it does work out. Now, one thing I haven't tested out that I'm going to do now is, does the tempered glass still fit? I don't know, but we're going to check. Here's the front one. Now, of course, these top two are gonna be perfect because well it's part of the case right the question is did I get the third point close enough now one saving grace on this is the through holes on the tempered glass are well oversized to say the least and I have a decent amount of wiggle room and that might be necessary. Ooh. And we are on.
And the nice thing is the back hole and the front hole match. So if the front fits, the back fits. And she's on there. Now, that being said, I am a little off. This one is not even close to sin. Not even a little bit. But I think if you moved it around, you could probably get it closer. However, that doesn't really matter. You're not going to notice. And that is one of the good things about the way they designed these mounting holes in that mounting bracket. Well, yeah. The mounting points. Points at which it mounts. They're good. Ish. And, of course, you got the little rubber grommets as well to protect your tempered glass. Which is also nice. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in the motherboard. And then maybe mount this reservoir, maybe wait. So I do want to test fit the radiators. And the main reason I'm test fitting those is I'm not quite sure what I need fitting wise. Now I've ordered 90s and 45s, but I have not got any um, risers or whatever you want to call them, spacers. I haven't got anything like that. I just got, which I don't know, I don't even have my 45s and 90s yet. So yeah, I can't even really test fit them, but I can get measurements and really see how that lays out. Um, the bottom of this is a little weird. Um, the front's pretty standard, so um, one thing to note is there's not a whole lot of adjustability unless you only mount to the middle holes. But I am doing push-pull, so that's not really an option either. <laughs> um, yeah, let's throw on the motherboard and come back to this. All right, we got the motherboard in. And if I don't say so myself, it was damn near perfect. I'm a little off in some places, but to be fair, I didn't actually plan on this. I kind of just put enough material around the post to hold them in place, right? To make sure I had enough for tapping and threading and all of that. And then around to the front. And I think this build is going to look great. Sorry about that glare, it's a sunny day and my tint is not quite enough. Now if you can see what I was doing back here, this kind of worked out well too. I will get the power supply on so we can test fit. Um, one thing I wanted with the build was to not hide the ASUS logo, right? Because why spend over $800 on a motherboard if you're gonna hide it. So I tried to show off as much of, of this beautiful motherboard as I possibly could. So the little power supply there shouldn't hide that at all. It's gonna get tricky trying to make the cables look nice, but you know, I did it to myself. Now back to installing more stuff. Okay, now I don't have all of the fans installed because I really didn't need to. One of the critical points, I don't know if I can get enough light in here to actually see or not. Maybe it'll show it and yeah, you can kind of see. So you got these two ports here and you don't have a whole lot of room. In fact, I don't think you have enough room, but maybe you do. I did get the micro 90s and worst case what I can do is I can flip the radiator around and have the tubes come out the bottom because I do have plenty of room for tubes to come out the bottom. Now I will have another set of fans under here so that's why you've got such a large gap. Now this will be the reservoir for my graphics card loop 
these pass-throughs are for that as well. And I've got the motherboard. And I did do plenty of clearance for the cables to come out and not hit the fan. But it might be kind of close. We'll see. They are Lee and Lee fans, so they're 30 millimeter thick. Maybe these ones aren't 30 millimeter. I stand corrected. They're 28 millimeter thick. They are the P28, so that makes sense. That was my bad. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Starting to look good. And then this reservoir is for the processor, which is most likely going to be a 14900K. And I do have another 240 rad up at the top. That'll be for the graphics card loop. Then a 360 at the bottom for the graphics card loop and a 360 at the front. Now, as you can probably tell, things are getting crowded. In fact, that fan is sitting right on top of the other fan. So we'll see how that works out when everything's up and running. They still have to put on the power supply to verify that fit. Go ahead and walk around here. I did not put the power button on. I kind of forgot about it. I have already test fit it. It does fit. I just wanted to see how it looked with the pump right there. I think I am a little bit, so it's hard to tell on camera, but that top part is not centered with the front of the case. So, a little bit off center, but oh well. And then the back side with the motherboard, which turned out really good. I'm really happy with that. And then I will have the fill and drain port at the top, the loop connection at the bottom. Same down here. Right here I have the out port on top. I'll block off the in port. Same right here. It'll be very similar setups. Um, I do plan on mixing hard tubes and soft tubes. So I've heard concerns of that changing loop color. I'm just going to hope it doesn't. And if it does... I guess I'll have to change the liquid a little more frequently. Now, I did not put these fill ports, or sorry, these pass-through ports in, but I did verify the size works because I do have these connected. Now, to discuss design mistakes, I made one. Right here, I kind of, well, didn't really pay attention to these slots. Now, I could have easily taken these two and moved them up and avoided this whole situation, but I just did not catch that in my design. Um, thankfully, I, I made this one long enough that I could move it, and worst case, I could modify it. Or if I absolutely need to, I can get a new part here. Um, I did originally have a steel bracket for mounting the reservoir up top. Um, I was off a little bit on those hole mounts, so it is not up there. But I do kind of like the 3D printed one, and it's plenty stable enough not to be an issue. I do have to modify that design a little bit. Um, I didn't have the right size screws, so I got to fix that out. I got to figure that out or fix it or both. Um, yeah, let me mount the power supply and then we'll get into closing comments. Power supply is on and it's rather adorable for a thousand watts. It's actually quite impressive just how small they've got. And whenever Asus puts out that 1200 watt Loki, that'll be impressive too. But there's no reason that what I have shouldn't be sufficient, right? We should be good with uh, running a thousand watt with a 14900K and potentially a 4090. Um, I've done some research on it and it seems to be seems to be just fine, right? Um, 
you'd really have to do some overclocking and push it probably in system testing to hit that thousand watt you're definitely not going to see it in gaming i doubt i'll see it in video editing definitely not going to see it in solidworks so there's that now this is crammed and i don't even have all of the fans on there yet and i'm even tossing around putting a fan here um leave in the comments if you would or not you know i was thinking about putting it there to run some air over the nvme drives um i don't know how necessary it's going to be if i go gen 5 there's a chance that that might not be enough to dissipate the heat on there but everything else is overkill so why not i'm just i don't know it's very cluttered so i do have the fans down here touching well i guess it's not the fan touching the radiator is sitting on top of the fan and there's no wiggle room to move that up any higher so i'm kind of just stuck with that the bottom radiator is moved back all of the way so i can't even make clearance from that way that being said these are 54 millimeter thick both of those and this one up here is 30 millimeter thick now i know i haven't gone through everything in the cooling system that'll be a separate video later um waiting still a couple weeks for an ek order now my next step off of camera is to go through and figure out kind of cable routing um maybe i'll do a video on that too i i'm going to do some cable mod cables but they're going to be custom and i want to figure out proper length and kind of how we're going to figure that out so the cables can come through here I have a droppage so they can come down here and then they can either shoot right back and up and around and out here or they can go down up and around here and connect there i do have cables that have to come up and out here and then you know you've got the graphics card which will have connectors here it's a lot to figure out so maybe it is actually a full video's worth kind of show you my thought process and then when it works out or not you'll know whether to follow what i did or not uh, i did set this up so that i can flip this power supply either way right i i can have the fan i can have the fan up but then i have the graphics card that could potentially be hot air which i don't think i'm going to get much from down below either way i have this designed to cover that this will look cool when it's painted, kind of give it that little bit extra as well. Once I figure out the cable length, then I can go through and completely tear this down, get everything back in the boxes, and I can start painting everything. Um, there's a lot. I'm uh, pretty sure I plan on painting every piece of metal on the case. And all of the 3D printed parts that I created for sure will get painted. Um, no need to paint the reservoirs. Um, I hid most of the logos. I might paint or replace the screws. Um, the, the motherboard does have some chrome. But I don't think it's going to be too bad to detour from the color theme. At least I hope not because... You know, with the Assassin's Creed, it is gold, right? All the logos are gold. Um, I think I've talked enough on this video, gone over a lot. If you have questions, you know, uh, post those down below too. I'll do my best to get back to you on those and, and kind of give my thoughts on the process. Don't forget to like and subscribe, right? Um, I appreciate you guys viewing and hanging in there and watching me struggle bust this build. I like to overshoot my capabilities and grow quickly. So we'll see how that turns out in the end. With that, thank you.